Hi, it's Rachel Maldonado. Belief in the human spirit and desire to connect is the reason that I want to tell your story and mine. And I am with Bryce Nyer, an attorney. Tell me about this. So I'm Bryce Nyer. I'm here in Fayetteville, North Carolina area, Fort Bragg. I'm the 82nd Airborne, 18th Airborne Corps, all the Special Forces, hoo-ah. So I've been practicing law about 30 years in criminal, civil litigation, international law, entertainment law. Uh, so I'm in the courtroom quite a bit. I uh, do a lot of appellate work all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. And we have a lot of fun here. A lot of fun. Oh, you have a lot of fun. So what do you mean by fun? Attorneys say they have fun. What do they mean? Well, I mean, when we have fun, it's like <laughs> you'd be surprised at some of the some of the things that happen in our lives and that happen in the courtroom. So you got to take them with a sense of humor because it's you know it's really kind of stressful. And sometimes events happen, things happen. Sometimes we say some stupid things, do some stupid things, and uh, that's kind of what keeps it alive and fun. Now, do you have any fun court trial situations? Yeah, well, the first one of the first things when I first started out here in Fayetteville was a long time ago. I had just arrived here and it was in the summer and I had to go down and get an emergency court order and I didn't know all the procedures. I didn't even know who the hell the people were. And, <laughs> you know, I'm going down there. I'm being thrown into the fire, you know, by the by the owner or senior partner of the firm. And I go down there and get this order and there's all these procedural things you got to do. Just like, you know, in the mental health or medical field, you got to check the boxes. And it was so confusing and the rules were so stupid. I had to run back and forth to the office 15 times, retype stuff and do it over. So I came back and I'm in the judge's chambers. And there's this guy sitting there. He's got a bald head. He's got a short sleeve shirt tie just sitting there in the reception room. And he looks at me and he says, what's the matter, young man? You look a little perturbed. And I'm like, I'm like, man, this is like the fourth or fifth time I've had to come down here trying to get this emergency order and trying to counter this stuff and reading all these local rules. I'm like, I'm like, who's a stupid ass that came up with all these local rules? <laughs> so this guy looks at me, he's like, well, I did. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, who are you? He's like, I'm Chief Judge Saul Cherry. Now he's a season now, but he's our chief judge. And the chief judge makes all the local rules and assigns all the other judges being in the courtroom, like the CEO. And he looks at me and goes, and who are you? And I'm like, I'm stupid. And he starts <laughs> He starts laughing. He's like, here, just give it to me. I'll sign it. Because this guy hated everybody equally. But it made him laugh and it made him sign up. And I'm just like, I'm coming all the way back to my firm telling my boss, I'm like, oh my God, I just met the chief judge. I didn't know who the hell he was. And this is what I said. My boss was like shaking his head. Um, so that was uh, one of the first times that, uh, you know, the stupid came out in me, so to speak. And it was kind of funny. And everybody else was laughing because they all knew who he was. had already been practicing here for years. And I'm brand new. And they're like, oh, man. That's funny because he does. He hates everybody equally. And then uh, I remember one time. Oh, man, this is embarrassing. So I was single and I was I'd been dating this girl and she managed a real estate company. I've been dating a couple months. So one of my colleagues came to me was like, I feel really sick today. I got 30 divorces I have to do today. And they scared, <laughs> they scared like 400 hearings a week. And it's on, a, I think it's on a Monday. He's like, I got 30, so I feel sick. I need to go home. Will you do my cases for me if there's no conflict of interest? So I said, yeah, just give them to me. The courtroom was packed. So I got out there and I said, I'm attorney Bryce Nyer. I'm standing in for attorney so-and-so. I'm going to do his divorce as he's out sick. You know, you know, meet me out in the hallway and just so we can, I can see who's here. So I go out and of course there's so many people you don't normally, you know, you can't, they're just a blur. So I look in this crowd of like 30 people and there's the girl I'm dating. And I'm like, oh. I don't recognize her name on the sheet of all, the, you know, has all the cases for the day. And of course it's under a different name. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? She's like looking at me like, uh, I'm getting divorced. I'm like, you're married? <laughs> and she's like, like, I'm like, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. And I was like, oh my God. I'm like, so I opened the file. I'm like, uh, you want to tell me what the hell's going on? She's like, well, we've been separated for a year, blah, blah, blah. I said, that's not the point. I didn't even know that you were se married, separated, or anything. So I'm like, I'm going back in the courtroom. Of course, you got to swear him in with the clerk and put him on the stand. And the judge, he's really cool. He's just, he's pretty young. He's just looking at me. And he notices something's a little off. And he's looking at me. 
And I'm just like really pissed. And I'm just like asking the questions you got to ask on the stand, state your name, how long, blah, 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 blah. And it's it's really kind of tense. And he calls me up later. He goes, is there anything you want to tell me about that? I said, no, there's not anything I want to tell you at all. Not one bit, nothing. And I'm just like, oh my God, you know, I'll walk it out of there. Yeah, so we didn't go out anymore after that. I was like, we're done. I'm like, you know, I can't deal with that. <laughs> and then the same judge um, around the same year, I'm in the middle of this trial, this custody trial. I represent the dad. And in the middle of the trial, the judge, and we all loved him. He's in private practice now. He's such a great guy. He stops the trial. And he says, Mr. Nair, I need you to approach the bench. And, of course, you have to bring the other attorney up there. You can't have this ex parte communication. I'm like, yes, Your Honor. He's like, are you married? I'm like, why, Judge? You ask me on a date? He's like, no. I got I got, I got, got somebody I want you to meet. I'm like, goes, I said, no, Judge. Like, I've been divorced for like three years. <laughs> I'm not asking you. No, no, we're going to stop. He goes, there's a clerk down in the juvenile division. She wants, she wants, she asks who you were. I want you to go down there right now. I'm like, what? So, so he stops the trial. He stops the trial. So we're going to take a recess for about 30 minutes. And he's like, go down there, go down to juvenile, go meet her. So I go down to juvenile court. And they're just like, what the hell are you doing here? I said, well, Judge Soso sent me down here. <laughs> he wants me to meet, he wants me to meet the clerk. He's like, what? And she's just looking at me I'm like, hey, you want to go to such such restaurants, a Latino restaurant for lunch? And the other judge just looking at me. And, uh, so I go back up. He's like, why'd you go down? I'm like, yeah, I guess I got a lunch date, you know? He's So it, it was kind of funny, but everybody was laughing at me in the courtroom, so. Oh my gosh. Did yeah. you feel pressured? Like you have to ask like, her to lunch? No, I mean, no, I mean, she, I mean, it was just, but he stopped the trial on my client. My client and I are pretty good. You know, we're, we're pretty tight and he's a great guy. He's just like, what the hell's going on? I'm like, I don't know, man, he stopped the trial to set me up on a date for lunch or something. I don't know. <laughs> The opposing attorneys laughing, and they're laughing. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then one of the one of the biggest embarrassing is I was I had I had this law clerk. We hire law clerks, law students, and we pay them. We don't work them to death for free. We actually pay them, pay them well. They come in and work for two months over the summer before they go back to law school. So we were working on two cases at the same time, moving for emergency orders to get the dads the emergency custody. So I I I mean they hire us that day. We're on it. I go down, I get the order signed by the judge. Kind of go, calls back, goes, look, man, I'm really grateful for how great you guys are and how fast you 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 got this. But there's only one problem. I'm like, dude, I busted my hunt today. What's what's the problem? You're like, dude, these aren't my kids. You gave me custody of somebody else's kids. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So what had happened is my law clerk, and it's my fault, okay? He switched the kids and the, the two guys going out at the same time. So we gave one of the guys my other client's custody of the kids. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I call the chief judge. I'm like, judge. I'm like, she's like, she starts to laugh. She goes, no problem. Just be down here at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Bring a corrected order. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll correct it. Um, so, I mean, you have things like, yeah, you, you, have, you have things like that um, that, uh, that go on quite a bit. So, I mean, it happens all quite the time. Quite a bit. I mean, lawyers, I mean, lawyers make mistakes in court orders. I mean, you can invert the parties and 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 stuff like that. And uh, yeah, but, uh, th you know, those are four of the, the key things in my life that were just, uh, you know, that were just embarrassing. And it's, it, you know, when you say them and then people, people remember them, they don't let you forget them. You know, even all these years later, people are like, yeah, man, you know, I remember the time you did it. You feel like, yeah, me too. And some of the some of the for a long time ago, the girls that actually knew there were girls like the one that was married that I know was married was separated. I'm doing a divorce. She was friends with people that worked in the courthouse. We're like, yeah, we didn't want to tell you. I'm like, you don't want to tell me? Well, it wasn't our business to tell you. You know, we knew she was married and separated. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. You know, how about I just cut your tire when I go outside the bargain line? How about that? You know, but yeah, you, you get some embarrassing moments if you if you're in the legal profession long enough. You'll say something, you'll do something, you'll be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I did that! I can't believe I said that!" And then when people are like, "What's going on?" and only you know what's going on, you're just like, "Just let me out of here! <laughs> just, just let me put a box over my head and and get the hell out of the courthouse." But yeah, we we there's been some interesting times, been some interesting times in the courtroom. So how do you balance, you know, how you feel? And then also try to save face. And for you, you'll just crack jokes or admit it. But do a lot of people do the opposite? 
Yeah, they they get they get well. I mean, first of all, you got to have a sense of humor. We got a great sense of humor here. Like you can't you can't hire me and work with me if you can't have a sense of humor because that's how we deal with people. You know, if you because people are expecting you as a lawyer just to like come hard charging and stuff, and then they they bow up and they get in a corner and you're not giving them any room to consider anything. So, you know, we handle it with a sense of humor and then it kind of gets them to calm down. It deflects them. And then they're more amenable to trying to work something out. But, you know, lawyers that come across, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Matlock or Perry Mason, blah, blah, blah. blah. I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to listen to you all day long as you scream at me across the table. So we, we handle stuff with a sense of humor, but some lawyers don't. Some are so serious. I'm like, Oh, dude, about three seconds, your head's going to pop off because, you know, it's it's pretty funny. So just accept it's funny and live with it, man. It's fun. They're like, no, man, I, I shouldn't have made that mistake. I'm like, ooh, don't worry. You've got the rest of your life to make a ton more, and I'm sure you will. So, again, you know, we just handle stuff with a sense of humor here, and it, it helps deflate the stress here in the firm. I mean, that's why when I say we have a good time, we've got a good crew. They're professional. But, you know, you you it's like the TV show MASH. I mean, that's kind of the way we operate here. We get it done. We get the mission done but we're just different in the way we do it. Yes. And what do you think about that you're a little bit different, your firm? Well, it's, it's unique. I mean, one, you know, one, I'm accessible. So I only take so many clients per week and per month. So other lawyers lowball the fees to get high volume, and then they drown like the rats that they are on the ship, okay? So, <laughs> you know, we don't. We only take so many clients per week and per month. Our fees are higher, but they have direct access to me almost 24 seven. You're not going to find out with many lawyers. So we email every day. They don't have to leave work. They don't got to leave their vacations. They're going to miss their medical dental appointments, be stressed out. Gotta, don't got to worry about getting me on the phone. Like, oh, you know, we're open eight to five. And on Friday, we're drinking at 12. See, we don't have that problem here. They just email me and I email directly back. And it's that one-on-one -on -one contact. And they feel part of the team, that communication is happening. And that's what makes us distinctive. Mm -hmm. and, and it works. Because that's what people want. They're like, look, man, I just want to be heard. I just want to know you're there for me. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, yes. And do you feel like because you do trial and some of the cases are complex that you see the whole gamut of human emotion? Yeah, I mean, we, we do things like, you know, like international child abduction between foreign countries. We do that. You know, the family law, we do the criminal law, we, you know, and then we do business law and stuff like that. So you get a whole smorgasbord of different personalities, different people. And of course, being in a military community, plus a civilian, you know, you, you get, you get, you've, you've got to tailor how you talk to people, depending upon what their occupation is. So if people come in and they're a doctor or a nurse or a therapist or in the military, we use the vernacular of their language when we give them the consult so they can relate to it, then they understand it and they remember it. Most lawyers are born. You're like, blah, 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 blah. And then people walk out and they're like, what the hell did this guy just tell me? See, that doesn't happen here. Like to my left, there's this big white board and they sit across from me and we we participate. We draw it all out and, you know, and we're, we're having this conversation, dialogue, just like you and I are having and explaining it to them in detail. And it's a lot of information, but we're changing, it's called frameology. We're changing up their frame of mind, the way they think. So when they leave here, they're completely empowered, focused, and have clarity. And they're not mm. the same person from when they walked in. Every The way they look at everything from the minute they walk out of here versus when they came in here is totally changed up in less than 30 to 60 minutes. Yes. And you meet people where they're at. Do you feel like your military background, you have a camaraderie, you know, it's easier for you with the military? Yeah. I mean, the first thing they, you know, they ask are like, you know, you've been in the military. I'm like, yeah, I read that on your website and you understand about military divorce. I'm like, well, divorce is all state law, but it's just a military community. And there's a few different things versus in like, you know, people that are not in the military, how, you know, how it works. So, you know, they relate. And then I have the photos of my dad in here in World War II, my son, some of mine when I was on active duty. But see, they connect. See, as soon as they walk in, they see that and it relaxes. And they're like, yeah, I'm among friends. You know, I get it. I get it. I'm, you know, and they just, they're really interested in it. You know, versus the rest of the I love me wall with all the diplomas and stuff. They're focusing, they're focusing on the photos, the military stuff, because they're interested in it. And then it creates a conversation and you're able to tell your story about who you are and where you're from. And they start connecting and then you start forming that, you know, professional bond and they, and, and they, and they like it. They relax. It really chills them out. Yes. Do you feel like as an attorney that you ha find your clients that they lie to you by omission or that it makes your job harder? You know, how do you cut to the chase? 
Well, I just, well, we sent, before they even talk to me, when they, when they call in to get a console, they have to pay in advance because we used to have a no-show rate. I'm going to go, we ain't doing that no more. You want my time, my value, you're going to pay to make sure you get, get your ass on up here. And so we sent them a two-page thing called a reality check. And it's like, this is the way it is. We're not safe spaces here. We're not going to hug you. We're not kumbaya. <laughs> we're not kumbaya. So we're like, look, man, if, if that's what you're looking for, we're not in. We're not going to put the little strawberry umbrella thing in the drink and all this kind of crap. We're going to cut right to the bullshit, get to the point. So when they they see that, they love that two-page. They're like, man, I love that. Can I have a copy? I'm like, we already sent you a copy, but you can have another one. And so, <laughs> like, yeah, every other lawyer I've been to, every other lawyer I've been to, they just like, you know, they don't tell me the way it is. So we're going to tell you the way it is. Just like, you know, if I go to a doctor and the doctor says, I want to know, okay, I got 30 days to live, right? He's like, yeah. I said, well, then I need to get the hell out of here so I can go blow all my money and travel everywhere for I'm dead in 30 days. So we deal in raw, real, relevant. You know, truth. We operate in truth. What are what are the facts without the feelings? What are the facts without the feelings? Oh, I I laugh so much. I was laughing hysterically because you're like, we don't say it's a safe space. And I'm a therapist and I own my life coach. And I actually use those exact words. This is a safe place, but I am dealing in secrets secrets such as sexual abuse things like that so right. i was laughing because you know our with the things we say we're a little opposite it's super well, I mean, funny it's, it's privileged i mean there's certain things that are not privileged like if they tell me they're going to go murder i mean we had one case where if you're going to go murder somebody i had that issue come up one time and I, a long time ago and somebody came in and wanted to consult me about certain stuff from another county i don't go out of county you know hardly at all because it's too logistically impossible He's like, I'm gonna go handle myself, and you know, then there was, I'm gonna go kill the judge, the you know, the wife, the attorney. This is all I can tell you because this is all Paul McGregor now. But and I'm like, that's one time there's no privilege. So, but when I come in, I'm like, yeah, everything we talk about here is privilege. But what I what I'm telling him is, I'm like, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spin it. It's not gonna be like media spin. We're gonna talk about, you know, what's really going on in life. What are the facts without the feelings, and, and what the hell do you need to do? Like you're here, you this is your gap, this is your impossible game. Where do you want to be a year, five, 10, 15 years from now? And we're going to look at, we're going to break it down. We don't have goals. Goals are like soccer. Okay. This isn't soccer. We have targets. It's like, man, what are we doing? You know, we're hunting, we're going hunting. And so, you know, you got, and they, and they appreciate that because they're not used to that. They're again, you know, see the problem with the legal profession is it puts you in a box. People apply to law school. They take the LSAT, the LSAT prep, the standard craft. They get the letter like, Oh my God, I've been accepted. I'm in law school. They think something of me. I'm like, dude, it's a mafia. They're going to take 800 million people. You're going to apply for student loans. You know, they're going to get the money guaranteed. And they know like 10 or 15 percent aren't going to make it, but they don't care because they know the rest of you guys are going to pay all this money to say, I'm a law student. OK, then you're going to graduate, take the bar exam, take the bar prep. Then you're going to get your license. Then they're going to put you in a box and tell you you have to be like this, this and this. And you're going to go along like the legal matrix. But that's why we're not. We're not. We're outside the box. We do things differently. We shoot and move completely differently than other lawyers. Mm. Completely. Do you different. feel that attorneys they they feel a certain privilege or status by being able to say that they're a lawyer? <laughs> Some of them think that. I mean, you know, they're like, "I'm a lawyer." I'm like, "Oh, okay. Wow, you're a legal genius." You know, here's the thing: there's a million lawyers in the United States, but there's not a million good lawyers, and that's the difference. You know. Just because you go to law school and you pass a bar exam doesn't mean you know what the hell you're doing. I mean, it's, that's academic. It's what you do in the field, and, you know, in legal combat. You know, you go into a court, you got to have the skills. The legal combat, the military, it yes. It's a, it's a legal battlefield. I mean, you know, there's not bullets and bombs flying and stuff. But again, you know, you've got assets, debts, children, you know, criminal cases, you know, going to jail, not going to jail, your freedom. I mean, there's stuff that's real that if it gets screwed up, and I'm not saying that, that, you know, the justice system gets it right because judges can get it wrong. Juries can get it wrong. You can be the best attorney and the judges be a crazy maniac, you know, and make some decision. You're like, somebody smoking weed today or what? I mean, you know, are we in the same world and it can happen. So, you know, that's, that's the key thing. Lawyers just, you know, you've got to be, you've got to have skills. You've got to have savvy. You, you've got to have experience. The academics is not going to get, is not going to get you through. I mean, 30 years experience, people are like, how much are you going to charge me? I'm like, we were only at the table for 10 minutes. I'm like, ooh, okay. But to get to that 10 minutes, took this amount of years of training and experience to reduce it to that amount of time to get this outcome versus spending eight hours sitting in front of a table, arguing to a judge and getting nowhere. So there's a value in the skill. It's not just the time my clients are paying for. 
It's the experience and the skill and the knowledge. Mm. You said something very fascinating that you deal in facts and not feelings. And this is so interesting because in my work talk therapy, you know, we do the feelings. And so how do you balance that you get the work done with the facts, but you also are caring. You have the pictures on the wall, things like that. You're doing a balance. Because they're not used to living in truth. They're used to living in this box of how they're supposed to feel or not supposed to feel. I'm like, I tell them, look, when you leave here today, you can go cry for an hour, but crying is not going to get you where you need to be. Okay. You're not a victim unless you, you know, if you've been stabbed with a knife or you've been robbed or raped or something, yeah, you're a victim. But if you're just going through a bad marriage or a bad, you're not married, you have a custody, you know, I mean, you're just, you just have, you just got a bad relationship, but you're not a victim. So mm. you got to get, you got to get out of that mentality. There are real victims in the world, but most of these situations are not victims. They're not it's a bad marriage, bad relationship. And you got to get them out of victim mentality because I've had two clients commit suicide. I did a divorce one time. This guy was 33 year old, commercial pot, good looking guy, beautiful wife, like three or four kids. And he didn't want to get divorced, but you know, he had some issues and the judge granted divorce like 10 30 in the morning, one 30 in the afternoon, I get a call and said, your client went out in the front yard, took a gun and blew his brains out in front of everybody. And I said that day, that's never going to happen again. So when I bring him in, I'm like, we're going to change your way of thinking. It's not hopeless. There's no losing case. There's just tough, tougher cases. Mm -hmm. So we're going to change up the way you think, how you approach it. We're going to give you a whole new frame of how you approach it from here on out. And they're like, nobody's ever said that to me. Nobody's ever talked to me like that. I'm like, I know because lawyers are lazy. They are. A lot of them are just lazy. They just want to like get you in, sign a contract, get the retainer, blah, blah, blah. And they're not going, through, they're not getting into the weeds. You got to get into the nuts and the bolts and the mechanics. So you understand what, why Bryce is doing what the hell he's doing on the day he's doing it in the courtroom. Because they're part of the legal team. And I tell them that. I'm like, you are part of the team. I can't do this without you. You have homework. This isn't like you throw it on me and like, yeah, that's it. Now I can go home and drink all day. I'm like, no, you got homework. You need to do it. You have to care more about your case and care about yourself than I do. Mm. So you have these complex and crisis situations and you are really trying to empower your clients to care about their case. And then to also the big picture, which is you're not a victim. There is hope for you. Yeah, they're not. I mean, I mean, like for example, child custody orders, they're never permanent. You, they can always be modified. Alimony can be reduced, increased, child support can enter. I mean, you know, certain things are not final. You can always go back to court if there's a basis to do it. But they're like, I just want it done now. I'm like, dude, your kid's three. I mean, you know, till this kid ages out, you're going to be fighting with each other. I mean, your spouse is like herpes. She's never going away or he's never going <laughs> away. You know, they're attached for life. Okay. So, so I mean, you know, this is this, 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 just the fact that even when your kids grow up, I mean, that's in the family law. In business law, you know, you're dealing with contracts. You know, you breach a contract, you know, you could get sued. And then the issue is well, who's going to pay what or is this whole deal going to fall apart? So there's going to be emotions always involved in legal. Like nobody's going down to the courthouse to have fun. Let's think about this. They're going down because they've been charged with a crime or they're a witness or they're going to the state's division because somebody's dead that they love and they got to, you know, manage the state or they're going to juvenile court, which is not good, meaning they've been accused of abuse and neglect uh, or they're in family court going through a divorce or traffic court. They got a speeding ticket or a DUI. So there's nothing fun about going to court. If people are down at court, they're not down there because they're going to like, hey, let's kumbaya and have a big kayak party. No, that's not what goes on down there. The court system is just a direct reflection of what's going on in the world. It's a mirror. You go down there any day and you can see what's wrong with society. You just get popcorn and a beer and just watch these people, man. It's just like, it's like the, it's like the Roman Coliseum. That's what it is. How do you balance that you see the depravity of court and the world and people at their worst with also providing hope and balance, you know, even for yourself? Because this is your world that you're dealing well, in. I mean, one of the things is like a couple of years ago, you see on my post on LinkedIn, I joined Wake, Wake Up Warrior, which is founded by Garrett White, which was a guy whose life fell apart and lost his mortgage company and stuff. And he's like, why are men so screwed up and what's going on? And he developed this kind of science, which actually works where 55,000 men have gone through it, you know, body, being balance and business. And so you have to live in truth. I mean, this is what we talk about. What are the facts of my situation? What are the facts of my, my body, my balance, my being, my business? What are the facts of my case? Where am I at? What's the reality here? And, and what obstacles do I have and what strikes do I have to overcome it? So for me, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I get up in the morning, you know, work out, um, 
you know, don't indulge in booze and all this other kind of crap and, and, and get, get clear and focused and weaponized to move forward for the day. And so we do handle stuff with a sense of humor. So to have balance and affirm, so I don't, my head doesn't pop yeah. off and I don't have a stroke, you know, the exercise, the nutrition, we're only taking so many cases. I've got great teams. Everybody here has to actually interview with everybody else. I don't make the decision. So when people come in here and our team to keep balance and to keep the stress down, we do working interviews. We pay people. They come in and they, I'm like, okay, I got your resume. Go today. And we put on the work right there. So then we'll say, okay, at the end of the day, we're going to do a two-way interview. You either see if you like us to come back the next day. Then we'll do that each day. And we'll do it for a week to see if we're a fit. And then the other staff comes in and they vote thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. So to keep balance, it's all about relationships. So with my clients and the court and everything, you know, sometimes you got to get toxic people and toxic situations out of your life and they got to go. I'm just going to say, I'm drawing the line. You got to go. And it's take, I, I focused on that during the last two years in order to keep balance to again, to where they're not carrying me out on a stretcher and I'm clucking like a chicken, buck, 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 you know, and all that. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, that's a great question because it can get overwhelming, really overwhelming. Mm. So you're laser focused. You have things that you want to achieve. And so you cut out the toxicity and you work on building the relationships that will help you. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you, it's all about relationships. I mean, like for a lot of people think like in business, like, you know, marketing is advertising. No, dummy. Marketing is not advertising. Marketing is connecting. Marketing is connecting. That's what marketing is. It's not advertising. So when we market, you know, it's like, you know, you got to get the hook. Like, and you, you got you to communicate your message. You got to convert their mindset. You know, it's called strategic seduction. But part of that is what is the relationship? That's like when people come in and consult me. I'm like, look, man, this is who I am. This is, this is the way I am. This is what type of lawyer I am. This is it. There's no, there's no bullshit here. This is it. This is me. It's a take it or leave it, you know? So yes. you're in the driver's seat. You decide whether you want to hire us or you don't. And it's that, it's that simple. So you can go consult with three other. I always recommend people go consult with at least two other lawyers. See the difference. No, I don't need to do that. I'm like, no, go. I mean, so it's up to them. They're in the driver's seat. But at the end of the day, I'm like, this is what I do. And this is what you do. And, our, and we don't cross in each other's ponds. Yes. You're the client, I'm the attorney, but we're a team. But at the end of the day, Certain things you have the final say on, and there's certain things I have the final say, and, and we make it clear from uh, up front. And it, it works for me. I mean, nobody's ever going to be happy. I mean, nobody likes going to court, and everybody's like, how many cases have you won? I'm like, there's no such thing as winning unless you win a murder case and you're acquitted. That's winning. But in family court and other stuff, you all lose. You all pay big bucks. You're all miserable, you know, until you change up your frame of how you think about living your life. So mm -hmm. you know, we're just, again, we're just, you know, raw, real, and relevant. I mean, that, that's what we do. We, we get down to it. I'm like, we're not going to bullshit. This is the truth. We're going to live in truth. We're going to operate in truth. We're going to litigate in truth, you know, and we're going to have a relationship of truth. If you want to come in here and you're pissed off, then tell me. That's cool. Yes. We're good. Yes. You mentioned strategic seduction, and I'm very fascinated because in my line of work, it is all relationships, divorce, dating, affairs, the whole gamut. What do you mean by strategic seduction? Well, strategic seduction is like in warrior, where, again, warrior is like, you know, the business where they have all these speakers come in, these guys, guys and girls at the top of their game. So strategic seduction in warrior talks about marketing. A lot of like lawyers and stuff don't know what the hell doing in marketing. So strategic seduction basically is about six steps, you know, starting with communicating your message, you know, uh, you know, converting the mindset and then eventually closing the deal. So everything's yeah. about that. So, you know, like, you know, what's your hook to get them in to see you and then how are you going to keep them? Because most people's attention spans like seven seconds and they're on their phone. So if you don't hook them in seven seconds, they're gone. You got to yes, communicate yes. the message and convert their mindset, you know, and you, you've got all these steps you got to go through. So in business, that's what strategic seduction talks about. So when people come in to see me and they consult with me, before they even got get here, when they go and they find me either through the website or a friend, and we send them that two-page thing, they just read it and they're like, wow, and they're hooked. Because yes. it's true. everything I say in there is true. And then they're like, well, I want to meet this guy. You know, I read this, I want to keep it. And then they come in and they realize it's not bullshit. And you're like, wow, this is really, this is really yeah, yeah, it's it's real. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm I'm not gonna tell you to do anything I'm not doing myself. So you can again, so the connections start because they don't want to talk to 15 people 
once they start talking to somebody, it takes a lot of energy to go tell the story again to two more people. Yes. Yes. So you are trying to match what you say with your actions. And that's how you get to this high level of competence and people see it. Yeah. It's just like communication. Nobody beats me in communication. They're like, I don't believe you're up at two in the morning. I'm like, oh, okay. Turn your <laughs> cell phone on. And I'm up, you know, I'm up. And they're like, and they're like, oh, you know, I'm I know you're not up. I'm like, and I call them or email them. Yeah, I'm up. What's the problem? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think they're like, yeah, like, they don't bullshit around here. You know, yes. my other lawyer never communicated or email. It's Chris, I know it's Christmas Eve, but you said it was an emergency. So, and this has happened, you know, it's happened on Thanksgiving. I'm like, yeah, we're here, but this is why you pay what you pay because you have access to me. There's value in that. Yes. Value. I also like when you were talking about you know, the physical and the mental and in talk therapy, we do that a lot. The mind body, they go together. Although I'm not a physician, you cannot negate what is happening in the body. So I always do a check with that. And you are doing it too with your life and your business. You're paying attention to both the mind and the body. Well, it's, yeah, it's like, like I said, in wake up Warrior, there's four, there's four main things, body being balanced in business. So body is about nutrition and fitness. Balance is about relationship with your spouse, significant other, and posterity with your kids. You know, businesses, you know, profits and protection, like how much cash are you keeping, not what you're grossing, what you're keeping, and how are you protecting your business and stuff. Um, and then you've got balance. What are you doing? Are you taking vacations? You know, what are your relationships? Um, being, you know, again, what's your relationship with God or whoever you believe in? So those four things have to be worked on every day. And they're, and they're all dependent upon one another. If one's out of whack, they're all out of whack. So when people come in and they're like, oh, my life's over and he, he or she's left me, I'm like, dude, your kids are always going to be your kids, but your spouse may not always be your spouse. Okay. Well, you know, we went to the altar and I'm like, yeah, God doesn't make mistakes, but people do. Okay. So you made a mistake. You married the wrong person. Uh, nobody marries the wrong person. I'm like, oh, really? Some people do. It doesn't work out. So like you buy a car. It's like I had an MGB convertible that, you know. And it kept breaking down. I'm like, I love that little car. I had it when I was in Germany, but it kept breaking down. Until finally, somebody said, "You gotta, you gotta take this, this, whatever the hell it was, take it out, and put this, this carburetor in." Doesn't matter how much you love it, if it's only getting 30 miles to the part, you know, it's not fun anymore. So once I took their advice and took the action, I never had that problem again. So as I tell people coming in here, you may want somebody or you may want something, but you don't need them and you don't need it. You may. Mm. Want you may want him. You may want her, but you don't need her. You don't need him. Ooh. Very beautiful. Want versus need. There's a difference. There's don't a difference. confuse it. That's right. You mentioned that you are always working on the connection and the relationship. And what advice would you give to men? Because you're in business and you're a man. And of course you work with everyone. But if you had to say something to a young guy, what would you tell him for your you advice? Gotta in, you got to live in truth. You can't lie. You got to, mm. I don't know, you know, how, how filtered it is on this interview. If you want me to tell you that, that, that the real motto of where I can, am I allowed to say it? Yes. I so, do not censor my okay. guests. Okay, so so the motto of warrior is stop the fucking lying, tell the fucking truth, and do the fucking work. That's it. The end. That's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's 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 part of the code in, in in warrior. So I would tell a young man, I'm like, you know, quit fucking lying, stop mm -hmm. fucking lying, start telling the fucking truth, and do the work that's going to be necessary to get you where you need to be. I've had to learn that. I'm yeah. doing that, and it, it 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 it's it's called you know you're shifting your life. Most people drift. Like in war, yeah. they tell you're drifting. You're drifting into the abyss of bullshit and the abyss of self-destruction. Nobody's coming to save you. You have to save yourself. Like Jesus saves your soul, but you got to save yourself. And people are just mm -hmm. like, I never thought of it that way. I'm like, I know. Because you're sedating on drinking, porn, Netflix, uh, Amazon, whatever. You're, 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 you're sedating on bullshit. And we got to get you out of that mindset. You got to focus on you. As I tell my clients, I'm like, your kids are not your most important thing. You are. You can't take care of your kids if you don't take care of you. And I say, look, when you're on an airplane, why do you think they tell the adults, you put your mask on first so you can save your kids? Because if you're passed out, you can't help your kids. Same thing in, in litigation and court cases being represented, whether it's family law, business law, criminal law, states, whatever it is, you have to take action for you in order to be the king and queen of your kingdom to take care of your subjects, so to speak, or your legacies, your kids, whatever it is, just like in business. Mm. That's, so that's, that's what I would tell a young man or woman, you know.
It is that effort combined with being truthful and then you can get to the results because how are you supposed to start how are you supposed to know well you take like it, like in wake up warrior we have to take assessments you know I, I didn't even know what the hell wake up warrior was i was just sitting at my desk one day going having a beer i was pissed off and shit and this thing came across i'm like who is this guy this is like five years ago and i'm like everything he said on the 65 minutes I'm like yeah true 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 order the book took the assessment on body being balanced in business and it asks a shit ton of questions and it, then it gives you a point and puts you where you're at. I'm like, oh my God, my life is screwed up. So when people come in, I'm like, well, let's look at the facts of where, where are you in business? Your money, okay? Where are you in your relationship with your spouse, significant other, your kids? I mean, you know, we're, we're going through all this stuff. What are the facts? Without any of the feelings, what are the facts? Like, yeah, everybody's got feelings. And then you got to figure out, okay, where, where, what is your, what we call where, where's your impossible game? Like if you could have, you know, just think of any, like I want to make $50 million. Okay. Don't make it stupid, but I'm like, reasonable will be like, I'll make a, you know, $50,000 a year. Radical game is I make 150. The impossible game is I make 500,000. Okay. How are you going to do that? You got to have monthly targets, not goals, but monthly targets. And you have to be ruthlessly committed to doing what you say you're going to do. And see, that's where, that's where, where most clients fail. That's where most men, you ask me about men, but men, that's where most people fail. They give up. And in my life, there have been times I wanted to give up too. But when you're a lawyer and you're litigating, you, you can't give up. You got to keep going no matter how tired you are. I mean, you just, you have to be ruthlessly committed to moving forward. And as I tell my clients, I'm like, you got some hard decisions. It sucks. I know they're hard decisions. And if you don't make a decision, that's a decision. There's no, there, like, for example, there, this word try, it doesn't exist. Okay. So I say, Rachel, pick up, pick, try and pick up the pen. You know, like I'm trying, I'm like, no, there's no try. You either picked it up or you didn't. There's no trying of anything. You either did it or you didn't. Did mm. you work out today? Yes or no? No, I didn't. Did you uh, Did you call your mom and tell her you love you? Yes or no, I didn't. Okay, then you didn't. So there, this trying stuff, there's no such thing as trying. I tried to pass the LSAT. I tried to pass my exam. No, you either failed it or you did pass it. Mm. Yes. I tried to make my marriage work. No, I mean, it didn't work. What, what, is, what, is, what is trying? Yes, it is everything that people say and think it takes so much space in their brain, but what actually matters is the action. Yeah, it's all about it, it's action. And, and that's one thing I've learned in my life. You know, there were times I'd sit there and complain and be the blue eyed whiner and shit. And, and some of my best female friends would be like, look, dude, you know, you're not you're not walking the talk. You're talking all this good shit and you're checking the block for your to do list, but it's not moving you forward where you want to be. And you gotta take action. Stop your whining, stop your bitching, stop your complaining, and do what you said you were gonna do. And do it now. Don't wait till tomorrow, do it now. And so I've had to learn that myself. So again, I don't tell clients to do what I'm not doing myself. Like when they come in, they're like, I wanna do a will, power of attorney, but I said, okay, well, here's my stuff. You wanna see it? It's right here in the next room. I'll go bring it in. I just updated all my stuff. I'm not gonna tell you to do what I don't do myself. Or insurance. Here's here's the insurance company that I insure. Yeah. And my last question for you, Bryce, is what makes you feel alive? Passion. Live with passion. Everything you do, no matter what it is. For example, like in relationships, you know, it's people, you know, they, they get this thing about relationships. To me, like being in love, you got to be in deep light. I mean, when you look at somebody, you know, guy, girl, girl, guy, and you're, just, you're sitting there and you're, like, and you're like, the further you step away, it's so painful you can't stand it. That's passion. Every, live with passion. Everything you do, just live with passion. Be passion. Yes. And no, ask the better question. Ask the better question. It's not what you don't want. You have to ask the question like Warren tells us. What do I want? See, everybody's asking the wrong question. You're like, oh, I know what I don't want. No. What do you want? Until you know what you do want, you're never going to get there. All the other, once you know what you do want, all the other stuff just falls away naturally. Naturally. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs>